What's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. We're out here at LS Fest, Holly LS Fest in beautiful Las Vegas, very sunny Las Vegas. We got uh, Joe here who built this awesome S14 that is LS swapped. I know, I know, I know. Oh, you guys are gonna be so upset. Another you one. guys, I, I get it, another one. But this one is done so nice. This one is so clean. In fact, you were working on this till 2 a.m. last, last night. night just yeah. to kind of get it ready for drag. Yep. Because this is not a show car. No, it's a, uh, try to do form with function as well. Has all the styling features, I guess, of most OEM plus S chassis owners with all the go as well. We tried to make sure it handled and performed along these has to support the power so all right so the first thing i notice when i look at this vehicle is just the way it sits the stance well first the first thing i notice is how purple it is which i think it looks great um it's what color is this so it's actually a valspar custom color um, i really wanted to go with an oem nissan color but everybody has midnight purple everybody has deep fuchsia so i love purple i started looking through the books um, we, me and my painter came up with a color decided to add some flake in it and this is what we got so i don't really have a name for it it's just a deep purple out of a valspar catalog it, it looks good. It, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like the 70s muscle car. The era. crazy plum purple, like yeah. Dodge. Exactly. Yes. It almost has a Challenger old Dodge purple look, just minus the flake. Yeah, it yeah. looks great. I mean, there is some kind of sparkle in it too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, the, the second thing I notice is how it sits in terms of like just the suspension and the tire, how it fits. This is obviously kind of an indication that it's all business. Yeah. This thing is for going fast. It's not for just sitting pretty. Yeah, this thing this thing will go fast in a straight line and it'll still break the tires loose even with the drag slicks in the back. Um, the fitment, I previously had two 45, 45s on the back and the car would not handle. It was scary. It was slipping all over the place all the way through fourth gear. Hence the drag radials. The 275, 45s were the smallest I could find. Uh, it took tons and tons of effort on the pull while retaining the OEM metal on the back. Tons of suspension work. Again, 2 a.m. last night, brand new arms trying to pull the, the camber in. We got it down to half a degree, so really happy with that. understand why more people don't build these S chassis this way. I mean, this is my sixth one, sad as it is to say that. From the time I was 17, I've owned S13 to S14. And, um, you know, when I first started building them, of course, I wanted it slammed. I wanted it low, you know, as much tuck as I could get. And when I built this one, you know, I you don't really see these dragged, I guess, per se stance unless it's actually at the drag strip and it is purpose built. So it's kind of fun to have a little bit of a mix of the street with the drag look. You know, it still performs. I have no issues getting in and out of parking lots, worrying about that. But, you know, yeah, when you pull up to the side, this thing really speaks on itself. <laughs> it looks great. And um, <laughs> you're also running uh, JDM wheels too. Yep. Nismo LM GT4's uh, staggered fitment. So we have 17 by nine in the front, 18 by 10 and a half in the back. I just think the staggered fitment really does well on the S chassis. Um, it's also insane to me how much effort you went to keep the stock body. It's just pulled I'm, out a little. I'm a huge OEM person. I, I'm, I'm not into over fenders. I know people are going to hate on me. I'm not into the rocket bunny look. That is just not me. I am. Uh, I think OEM styling fits the cars better than anything. I mean, so literally the only parts on this car as far as exterior body that aren't OEM are the Ganadors, the Gretty Lip, and that's it. Everything is, you know, OEM plus. So Navan skirts, it's an OEM S13 front bumper. We actually just shaved out the license plate mount and fiberglassed it in, so it gave it more of an aero look. A lot of people don't, you know, they don't utilize the factory parts, and really, they, I mean, the body lines speak for themselves, clearly. Yeah, uh, <laughs> because it would be all too easy for you to just bolt on over fenders and call it a day, but honestly, it just doesn't look, it wouldn't look as good as it is now. Yeah. When I'm looking at it, it, it just, it, it just blows me away how much tire you can fit 
underneath or almost underneath yeah, the stock almost. fenders. Um, but just walking around it, I love, love, love this badge so much. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really uh, awesome guy. He's a small company in the USA and New York called G2 Carbon. Um, he's gaining some popularity, he's very good. Um, he does carbon work and he also 3D prints and fills and resins. So he's been getting big into the badge game. And um, yeah, I liked his quality, decided to give him a shot and he nailed it. I mean, it looks, oh yeah. It, yeah, we tried to bounce off the S14 Sylvia lettering over the S15 because all my other OEM styling parts, as you'll see when we light things up, like the Sylvia brake light, it'll all be the S14 font, so. I love, love also your plate. Your yeah. plate is hilarious. Yeah. Um, and and you, you still like SR20. I love You're SR20. SR20 I, too. I, I don't hate on any motor swap at all in a 2 I love 240s. I love, I don't care if you put a RB, a JZ, a SR, a KAT. I, there's so many new swaps coming out for S chassis. It's fantastic. I love that people are venturing out. Um, I wanted to, on, when I bought this one, I did want, obviously I looked into SRs and KAs, but the LS price point just made far too much sense. Yeah, for, for the money. For the money, it's the money and the power desired and what I wanted this car to be. But yes, I mean, um, Minnesota doesn't give you options like California. You cannot look up which plate is available. So you get three choices when you fill out the script. This was my second choice. Sylvia was my first, but of course it was taken. So LOL SR20 was it, but I'm actually really pleased with it because it just fits the car. I know a lot of guys are gonna get upset with it, but I don't mean any harm. I just think it's funny. It just speaks on the car. You see the car and you see the plate and you go, hmm. <laughs> it's, it's funny because even like, I think SR20s now are probably just as much or if not more than LS yes. swap, right? Yes. Because uh, they're just, dis they've just been destroyed yep. and they're just, people get them people destroy them and throw them away yep. yeah let's check out the engine bay Jeez, it's just so clean so the s15 it does come with a place for a plate yes sir right? it's it's molded it's actually molded outward and it allows you to mount the plate it has like the rib nuts in it and everything so when i was doing this again trying to retain oem it was this or go with the spec r and the spec r is beautiful i love the vents in it it looks really nice but I haven't seen too many people work with the factory bumper. So yeah, we literally cut out the section that had the molded section, fiberglassed it in, fixed it, and uh, this is the result. So I think it really adds to the front end. It kind of already gives it the aftermarket bumper look. That, that's kind of the thing is the stock S15 bumpers, if you don't run a plate, it kind of looks funny, you know, because does, there because is of that. A, a space there. Yep. And then I think it's the same way with like the R32 GTR and also uh, the RX7, yep. uh, what is it, the Spirit R, yep. right? Yep, it, it all bolts it, out. Yeah, it, bul it bulges out, and then, which essentially forces you to have to run a plate. It, otherwise it looks silly because it's just a big bubble coming off the front of the bumper, exactly. And it kind of takes away from the nice smooth lines of the car, so. Um, yeah, I really loved the bumper and then of course the chaser lip has always been, to me, Gretti's chaser lips have always been a favorite for S chassis, whether it's the Kuki, the Zenki, or the 15. Man, this is so serious. Yeah. Like, the... I, I love how much effort also you went into kind of making it um, subtle. Yeah, the bash bar, uh, we were d debating on paint, we were going to make it another color, but I always see them really bright and it just stands out from everything. and. I was worried again on the flip side if it was too much purple, but the color match really came out flawless, I think. Um, the whole reason for the bash bar is it sparked was the four inch intercooler. <laughs> uh, you're not allowed to keep an OEM retainer with that. <laughs> Just, right. <laughs> it doesn't work. So let's check out the engine bay. Jeez, everything is so, it's color matched. I love this so much, this sticker. Forrest is a good guy. <laughs> I love to support him. <laughs> we hate. I love that. A little more, and again, another play on the, the irony. <laughs> yeah. Well, we miss Forrest Wang. I hope he comes I do back too. to Formula Drift sometime oh, yeah. soon. All right, so what am I looking at here? So this is a 2002 LS1. Um, it has been fully forged, built, cammed. It made 370 NA. We decided to add the supercharger. Uh, it's a Vortec V3 with Heritage gears. Um, it, on six pounds of boost, it's making 500 horsepower at the moment. This is running a full Siki right-hand drive LS swap kit. Uh, also utilizing just about every other product from Chase Bay's, from their tucked radiator to their power steering kit to their brake booster delete kit. It's just so clean, I love. So we color matched the, the Shiquito plates 
color match, the bracket for the supercharger, everything else is played off of the anodized uh, purple hardware and fittings. And I was worried it would be a little too much purple, but um, I think the offset of color really helps it. Um, when I built this car, my, fav my favorite part of the engine bay out of everything is the Tomei three point strut bar. Um, it's a really hard to get piece for S14. And I just love the, the tripod stand and how it really looks in our engine bay. So it's a little faded, but the anodized green was the whole purpose behind me incorporating green into this car, down from the calipers to the roll cage to, so a lot of the, anything that's green, I tried to play on what the original Tomei color would have been. <laughs> it's interesting because you, you like, uh, you actually, uh, matched kind of the I, faded look i tried to i tried to get it as close to possible it's really hard on anodizing you know the color it's you know a lot of companies like uh, the custom catch can the guy said i'm gonna get really close for you but i'm not sure if it's gonna be exactly dead on so we tried our hardest um you know, all the people who helped with the random parts and stuff like that so i'm happy with it kind of gives it a barney theme <laughs> purple and green i wasn't gonna say or it. joker i mean there's, yeah. there's a couple different <laughs> I do have to say though, I I don't think I've seen a V8 swap in a S chassis this clean. Thank you, man. I, I you know the whole the tubular front ends and stuff they are fantastic. They utilize a lot of space and you know they create areas that you don't have to be concerned with anymore. But right now. Um, in this build particular, I, I love the OEM core support. Um, when we did the right-hand drive conversion, we also did the S15 conversion at the same time. So this is an S15 brand new core support that we welded in, modified it so that the center can be removed for ease of engine pulling and whatnot. So, Okay, so this was never a right-hand drive car. Never, I did the right-hand drive conversion. Oh. This is a 95 Zenki USDM car. Okay, yes. so then you sourced the dash and source all of the right-hand drive parts. Yep, I bought from. a clip from uh, David at JDM in California. I needed just the firewall, the dash, steering column, and the rack, and that had everything that I needed. So um, it took about a year probably for that whole process. I drilled out all the spot welds, literally took every piece of sheet metal off until we got to the firewall. So, But why right-hand drive? A few reasons. Obviously, there's you know always the fun factor of being on the right. Um, they make so many more awesome design and rare parts for right-hand drive, actual Sylvia's that don't fit the left-hand drive chassis, uh, especially in the interior. So I, was re I really wanted to utilize a lot of those parts that I already bought. I was already in my mind when I got it. I already knew eventually at some point I was going to convert it. But I also have a Toyota Alteza, so that is right-hand. So I'm, I guess I'm <laughs> a little bit of the, the, the hype boy. I want to be. I want to be on the right. I'm just used to it now. I like it. Why not? I mean, because uh, just back to the engine bay and how clean this swap actually is. Most of the time when you see this swap, it's for drift cars and track cars that there's, there's no reason for it to look so clean. It's more just function only. Yeah. But this, you just wanted it to be as OEM fit and finish. You want it to be as clean and as... I, I mean, I don't know what else to say besides finished. The bay, it's finished. The bay is at least half the car, in my opinion. You know, I mean, people spend a lot of time on the body and the exterior, and that's great. And even spend a lot of time on maybe building the motor and spending a lot, you know, ensuring that the motor is built properly. But I think a lot of a lot of builds, unfortunately, you know, they forget about the bay. It's just it really speaks to the rest of the car when you pop the hood and it matches everything. You know, the, the same quality level. That's it looks great. Um, OK, so if you could just put that down. Yeah. We'll kind of go around a little more. <laughs> I love the brake calipers so much. What, why does it say Chevy Performance on it? So these are CTSV four piston Brembo calipers. So um, again, playing on the Sylvette LS swap. Uh, I didn't want to you know, put VET badges or the Vs. So um, the Brembo Chevy Performance, I just thought really fit. Again, the purple and the teal. Um, I, I just, I couldn't fit the six piston, so the four piston was enough for the 17. I know there's a million, I had Z32s before. It's really not a performance gain whatsoever. It's purely visual, but when I did this car and I started building this car, I literally did not want to leave any of the previous parts on it. It just, it wouldn't have matched. I had to, if this is getting changed, well, this has to be changed. Well, then this, you know, and that's what sparked the uh, desire to make everything just, you know, flow right. The rear caliper, the fronts are Brembo 
CTSV, the back calipers are STI Brembo. Oh, okay. So, huh? Hmm. And the rear end setup is just insane. What's going on here? So this is what they call the Frankenstein diff swap for the R200 diff. This is a early 91 through 95 Q45 differential, which uses a 354 gear set. It has a GK Tech extended cover. It's utilizing Z32 twin turbo driver axle on one side and a Q45 driver axle on the other side. Why? Because of the lengths and having to do the Q45 goes to a six bolt star pattern versus the 240, which is a two bolt, three star pattern. So in order to get the half shafts and the axles and everything to work, you need to go with this particular setup, not only for the flange mating surfaces, but also for the length when you put this diff in the S chassis. Another benefit when you do this swap is this is supposed to be the most bulletproof R200 diff swap because of it uses the Z32 twin turbo hubs and axle, which is a larger one inch spline, 32 spline hub versus the 28, which is found on the S chassis. So a little bit bigger, similar to Z33. Um, it's a lot of work to get it to work, but it's bulletproof, it's solid, it's a VLSD. So um, yeah, I had 409 gears in this previously and it was not fun on the freeway. Um you did pretty much everything on this car, yes, huh? Every Except for paint and the welding. And, and w w how is it that you know all this stuff? What, what's your background? Um, as far as the 240s go, I've owned a few. Um, so sadly, I know a lot about these cars, but I'm a mechanic by skill set. Um, I, work, I work on heavy equipment. And uh, I've always been into cars starting when I was 16. Uh, just started building them with my grandpa and eventually moved up and um, I built this in my garage. This is, you know, aside from taking it to the paint shop and to the fabrication shop to get some of the welding done, um, this was built in a garage using hand tools, power tools and everything that, you know, you would be able to have access to. No air, no lift. Um, this is... It's done right. Uh, okay, can we take a look at the interior? Yeah. Can you go on that side? Man, it, it just, it fits right. So tell me about the cage. Okay, so the cage is a, actually designed for left-hand drive. It is a auto power, which is a US company, hence why they only make left-hand, but it is a six-point bolt-in um, auto power that was originally black. We had repowder coated to match the rest of the theme of the car. The interior, again, the front clip is from the, J, the JDM of California clip with a lot of extra goodies, in my opinion, added in. Again, touching on the right-hand drive. We get a lot of cool features like uh, optional business card holder, <laughs> uh, JDM climate control, which all works. Um, and another, oh, you have AC? No AC, but I do have heat. Okay. So, but the blend doors and the JDM um, adjuster, everything works off the buttons, no problems at all. Um, this chassis, when it was converted, when we did the conversion on this, I utilized all right-hand drive um, engine bay harness, saloon harness, and rear chassis harness from a 98. The reason for doing that was not only was my clip from 98, but I was able to source the only S14 heads up display that I know of, and it does work. So um, again, another right hand drive part that I found and had bought prior to even doing the swap. So I knew when I installed this, that's what I was going for. I love all the little rare parts that you've been able to get. Um, yeah, this, the seals that you're looking at, this, yeah. this is part of the uh, S14 full lighting package. So it was four parts. It was the door seals. It had the rear louvers in the back windows that light up and say Sylvia. It has the Sylvia third brake light. And if you actually hold your hand under the dash, you can see it has the under dash green lights. And that's stock? This is all factory. This is a factory option on an S14 Sylvia from Japan. Very, Jeez. very hard to come by, but um, with all four pieces, it really looks, everything is illuminated right now. Well, those, this lights up. I have a switch that I installed right here. Uh-huh. And uh, there is going to be almost impossible for you yeah, to see yeah. it right now, but yeah, they, but are, night. they do illuminate. So we, I installed all that. You know what's really also surprising to me is You how, recognize these seats? Yeah, these are the R32 GTR I mean, seats. Died. Oh. I dyed them. Because this is similar to the color that it comes. The, but... It's a little more blue. Okay. Yeah. So I bought these seats from uh, a, a, a guy that worked at Gretti. I don't remember his name. He had an R32 and these were sitting on his shelf. Um, I picked them up 
I ran them for a little bit and when I did the conversion, when I redid my interior to the black suede door panels and headliner, um, these didn't match anymore. And I really love the feel of the R32 seats. I think for factory seats, they're fantastic. They grab you, they still adjust, and they just still look OEM. And that's, again, what I was going for. So found some dye, taped off the center sections, and this is the outcome. I've sat on these plenty of times in heat, and I have sweated in them, and I've worn light clothing. I have never had a stain on a shirt, ever. It looks really good, I mean, because- and it's still soft. One of the things that people don't, actually, I think people have never seen, <laughs> or at least in our generation, is untouched R32 stock seats that haven't never seen the sun or anything. They're actually dark gray. So they are a it. little bit. They're not that blue tint that yeah. you, okay. They, they, and they, I haven't seen any. <laughs> but, but then once they see the sun and it, over time it ages, it just turns blue. To that blue color. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've never seen, I always thought the darker color was maybe the R33. There's a special edition of the R33, not the ones that are the really big kind of truck seat looking, but I think it's the GTR R33. It's similar in design, but I want to say it's a more dark gray from factory. Yeah, they look really good. Um, the rear seats, again, are S15 blue seats that have been dyed black. Um, with this roll cage in particular, and this, uh, here, let me, let me go ahead and turn it on for you and I'll explain. Um, the headliner, when we reupholstered it, we also, oh, let me turn on the Bluetooth. Whoa! So it actually, color changes, it'll dance with the music, it'll do whatever you want all from the phone, but. Um, Whoa, this is like, um, I guess, uh, is <laughs> I think, a, I think this is a feature off of Rolls Royces yeah. and really, really, really high end cars where they have like a, a star kind of thing going. But uh, yeah, we'll get a clip of it at night just so we can kind of show yeah. how cool it looks. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, all the strands run down this B pillar and go into a control module. So hence the LRB panels that were powder coated black so they at least match the whole theme of the car. I wanted it to be as blacked out as possible. I think the black interior always is a, you know, a favorite for our cars. Um, S15 carpets um, and these are these are made by a guy in Australia. He's really awesome. He makes a lot of Z chassis, S chassis, R chassis. They're laser fit. They're called true fit mats. You can order them with whatever badge you want. You can even put your own custom badge, but they're laser cut. I, of course, had to cut my brand new mats for my roll cage. But um, again, they, they really help out. There's even a little center mat right here that has the tying. So yeah, it's, there's a lot of really cool parts that are being produced for our cars now, and it's awesome. It's too easy for somebody to kind of blow this off when you tell them that you have a, a S14 with a S15 front end converted to right-hand drive and it's running LS. Yeah. It, that You just don't even begin to un, uncover all the cool things you've done to this car and all the rare parts that you've been able to source. That I guess that's so much of the fun part of building this, right? It is, the, the hunt, the 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 opportunity to get that one part that maybe you haven't seen or only seen in a magazine. I know I have a few S14 brochures from uh, actual Sylvia's and it's, it's awesome to be able to look through the book and go, hey, I have that, <laughs> or hey, there's that. I mean, another really random uh, optional knee pads, both on the door oh. panel and the dash right here, only on the driver's side. So there's no a knee way. pad here along with the S13 or S14 dead pedal. Just, just so you can corner more or? Just, you know, I think these gripped you better so your knees didn't slide around, but yeah, it's really funny all the factory option parts that they actually made for a Sylvia. No way. Yeah, it's stuff that the S14, or I'm sorry, the 240 over here never had a chance to get. Huh. So, you know, yeah, it's really, just... really neat to just see the little things. I don't really get to see that many builds, S chassis builds like this. I mean, because a lot of times when I'm featuring Honda builds from the 90s, it's it's pretty much the same thing, right? They're like, hey, this is so rare. It's the only thing I've ever found. You're, you or, might not see another, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, whether it be keyless entry or even something as simple as the first aid kit or uh, some sort of wing or interior trim piece, that is very, very, very rare. It You just, I guess it's a, maybe part of it is because these were cut up and they were used for drifting. Yeah, I, you know, there, 
I, I love the drift builds on S chassis. You know, they're great. You know, they're purpose built and stuff. But yeah, I mean, I think interior especially is another area that this chassis it always gets fallen, you know, behind. And people just don't go that extra mile for it. And it really completes the whole art. The interiors are nice. They can be nice, but everybody's idea of a 240 is a cracked dash or a gutted interior and missing a seat. So yeah, I mean, the quality of the build I think, again, it's, it, it's all the parts. It's the exterior, the interior, the engine bay. It's, you know, it's the whole car. Let's, um, can you turn it on so I can hear it? And then maybe we can take it for a ride? Yeah. healthy it sounds good when it's idling what yeah. um what fuel are you running i'm running a blend of 100 octane mixed with 91. i do about three gallons of 100 mixed and top the rest off with 91 so i'm not going to say i know the math exactly but i'd say i'm around 94 95 octane i really did want to go 85 but i was really far into the build at that time and i would have had to change all my lines again and so um, i'm happy with the power output Again, it made 500 on six pounds of boost with this tune. So I do think I can squeeze more. Um, it wasn't knocking yet, so I think we have some more room to grow with, even with the 95 octane. Let's go for a ride then. Perfect. Okay, you got purple gloves too, huh? I do, I don't want to distort the uh, titanium shifter. Huh, so your hand oils, yep. you're saying it will actually <laughs> discolor the shifter? Yep, titanium will actually distort from some soaps and the oils in your hand. That's funny. It's, it reminds me of me when I um, am driving my Skyline, I take my ring off because I don't want to- Scratch it? I don't want to scratch yep. my Nismo shift knob. <laughs> exactly. Which is bad. <laughs> All right, we go, which way? Yeah, uh, we can go out that way. Whoa, okay, so you got a gauge it's, in there. It's kind of acting funky at the moment. Uh -huh. I'm having issues with my Defi. Oh, I think we, oh shoot, sorry, let me pull around. We'll go back out to the- Oh, so it, it replaces the, the vent it, over Yeah, it, del it deletes the uh, AC vent. Mm. And even your Kenwood, uh, it, this is purple. Yep, you can change the colors on that. I didn't want a big double din that had the screen. I just kind of wanted it to match what was supposed to be in this car. What do you use this car for? Um, just honestly driving. Uh, I've, I've only had it running and, and actually driving around for maybe a couple months. I've had a lot of issues with steering racks and the right hand drive and rebuilding them. But um, again, this car has been down for two years doing the whole right hand drive swap and the S15 and the supercharger. All three of those things were done at one time. So literally changed about the entire car. What kind of suspension are you running in it? So this is, the coilovers are Fortune Auto, uh, custom built, 16K in the front. Go left? You can make a left. Okay. Yeah. Okay, for, uh, Fortune so Auto. Fortune Auto's in the front. Uh, I'm sorry, all the way around. In the front, we have GK Tech version four grip knuckles. And in the back, we have PBM drift drop knuckles. The rear is full PBM arms, and the front is Megan uh, front control arms. This is just your street car. Your, yep. And it's not even it's not, it's it's not a sleeper. It because it oh it, no, it looks it looks pretty aggressive. Hard. And I actually really love the stance of it, just with the big tires in the back. Yeah, I think it looks great. It gives it a lot of. I, I was worried that it might have been a little too much hike. I didn't want to feel like I was staring at the ground, but I don't notice it at all. No, you really that. don't. Other than you know the roll cage, but. Incredible. The, this, it's actually super bright for it being in the daytime. In the, yeah, at night it really it will light up the whole yeah the whole car. So would you ever take this drifting? Probably not. No. Maybe if the course was wide open and I could maybe change my tire setup in the back, I would consider it. But I don't think I would ever try and slide it the way it is now. I don't have enough clearance in the back. Right. So you do want to take it to the drag strip. I'm curious to see what it would do, yeah. And you also do 
potentially would would, would, you, would you take it to a road course or is it more just for straight line speed, um, do you think? Again, I think if I, as long as I had to change my tire setup, I think it would handle it. I, I have enough suspension work, I could dial it in, I'm pretty confident. It's all about having the right alignment and the setup for it. Yeah. I definitely built the car because I wanted people to enjoy it and I love the way that it looks and all the things that I've done but um, I, I am the, the mechanic in me is curious to see how it handles uh, I have gotten on it plenty of times but I haven't been able to slide it or really do anything of that that nature and so what kind of transmission is this? This is a T56 using a MGW short shifter and a McCloyd Magforce twin disc. Whatever you feel comfortable. Whoa! It's like struggling for traction. Yeah. Jeez. Even with those fat tires in the back, what size are those tires? 275 45s. And do you have it aired down pretty good? I'm at 20 PSI right now. Huh. Oh my god. It just spins. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Woo -hoo -hoo, my god. It's not that loud either. No. It sounds pretty good. Jeez, it, 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 it honestly, if I didn't know any better, I'd feel like I'm in a right-hand drive Z06 or something. <laughs> you know, this, jeez. It just moves out so good. Oh my God. You're, you're really fighting for traction. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. That is incredible. When that boost kicks in though, huh? Oh yeah. It's instantaneous. The supercharger is just, the, the power is just there. It's instant. It's so much different than my turbo cars that I've driven. And you know, I got, I love the turbo. I love the lag. It's just, it's honestly been a breath of fresh air. It's my first supercharged car. And uh, let me just say, it's been really, really fun. It's pretty cool, uh, honestly, that you're even able to get the stock gauge is working yep i uh the fuel gauge works the the heat i'm working on i'm sorry the, the coolant i'm working on i'm actually adapting a nissan temperature switch to get that to work as well i have it down here so i'm not concerned but i do love the oem gauges a lot of guys go with the stacked gauge or the holly and i mean there's nothing i love them they're fantastic they give you so many more features and settings and stuff but it just plays again on the the quality go right i'm no, no 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 go go straight i i just like but for example the the stock uh, tachometer works. It yeah, the speedo will work. It has a Dakota Digital. I just haven't set it up yet. That's and then the stock fuel tank. Yep, works too. All so, what um, what's the red line on this motor? Red line. Well, okay. So red line is actually higher than what I need to be shifting at. Red line is sixty seven hundred for me. However, using the Vortec V three, I have to be careful with how much RPM I spin the supercharger. So. Currently, with my setting and my crank size, my pulley size on the supercharger, I'm maxing out my supercharger RPM limit, which puts me at 70,000 and I think 500 RPMs coming out of the supercharger. Uh -huh. And that's pretty much it. So my shift point is 6,000 right now. Okay. So if I, I wanted to change that, I would have to go with a larger supercharger or something I could get spinning at a faster rate. You're, you're like on that fine line. I'm watching yeah. the RPMs climb and it's like, it's it's climbing so fast you have to shift so it's, fast it's, yeah it's immediate this guy this guy wants to run yeah. <laughs> with his 12 inch tires look at him well joe thank you so much for showing us this build this is exceptional and again it, it's too easy to look this over but but just talk about quality everything is uh touched and you've just you've really made it your own uh, with a chassis that's been done to death a ton of times and uh, yeah thank you man i appreciate you looking at it and you know going over some of the small details that honestly just get the most overlooked 
and I think that's you know that's what really makes the cars unique. There could there's a million LS 240s around. That's you know we don't ever claim to be the first to do it, but I think it's about how you execute it that really stands out. Yeah, no, for sure. That's awesome. Well, we'll keep shooting at Holly LS Fest West, and yeah, we'll bring you guys as much coverage as possible from this event. See you guys later. Yeah.